how men above 30 can lose 33 to 66 pounds and unlock superhero energy using simple science-based sprint workouts. I'm willing to bet that if you are a man over 30, having kids is your motivation to finally get back in shape. The good news is that there are guys who are just like you that are in just as good of a shape as when they were in their 20s, if not better. So here we have Jeff, 61 years old. Look at him. I mean, this guy looks like he's 21. Vincent, 38. Marco, 44. Robert, 37. Christina Trucks, 44. Window, 60 years old. In this image, in this one on the left, it is a video. He's 55, and he's smoking a 28-year-old. So all these people are real people. If you want to see them, you can go to my Instagram, Spring Club dot co it's spelled just like this spring club dot co on instagram and you'll see these athletes we have them tagged and we have their profiles and everything so you'll see this is real this is not this is not make believe this is not photoshop so why is it so difficult if we can help athletes get into competitions set world records win world championships get crazy rip like this win uh, multiple gold medals in one day uh, why are the, are other people struggling just to lose a few pounds? So I'm going to tell you what to do, and I'm going to show you step-by-step step what you can learn from the athletes we've already coached just for losing weight. Because I know not everybody wants to do all this other stuff. I know if you want to just lose weight and you want to get, get in good of a shape as you need to to keep up with your kids, I'm going to show, show you pretty much 90% of what you need in this video. I say 90% because if I explained everything, this video would be like 10 hours long. So here's why it's difficult, more responsibilities. Diet is more difficult because of work, uh, lifestyle, and training consistently is tough because you have to balance life and fitness. So what people do wrong is they immediately jump into testosterone, hormone therapy, ozempic. They think they need these things. Uh, you actually don't. Uh, what we do differently is we believe you should not try to fix this artificially because you want to uh, tackle the problem naturally first. Low testosterone, no low metabolism, low energy. These are things you, you can fix naturally first. And this is not medical advice. This is just a recommendation from years and years of experience and hundreds of athletes and, and individuals that we've coached. So, we know that this is not necessary for most people. We know most people do not need testosterone therapy. They don't need Ozempic and all these things. Instead, most people just need one to two hours, more hours per night of sleep. They need to eliminate sugar Monday through Friday at least and train two to three times per week using high-intensity interval training, specifically sprint training. And I'm explaining why later in this video. If you train this, at, if, sorry, if you try this and you still need it, that's fair. But you should be fixing these problems naturally. If not, these artificial solutions, they're just putting a bandage over a cut that's losing a lot of blood. And you're, yeah, you need to stop that bleeding first before you try all these other things. After you make the necessary corrections, if you continue with these artificial solutions, you will be even, it will be even more effective and you will be even happier with your results. If you still want to do all those things I just mentioned, at least fix your sleep, cut out sugar and train two or three times per week. Do that first and then those things will be even more effective. So what people do wrong is they do strict diets, crash diets, they switch an entire diet overnight. If you try to change your diet overnight, this will shock the body and Usually, it leads to a failed diet and binge eating. So this show right here is called The Biggest Loser. It was super popular at some point. I don't know if it still is, but they basically got a whole bunch of people that were extremely overweight, and they paired them up with a personal trainer. They gave them a strict, a strict diet, a strict workout program, and they lost a bunch of weight. But what do you think happened after the show? I'm going to tell you what happened. They did research on it. This is a research paper published in who knows where, but if you look it up, you'll see six years after Biggest Loser and it'll come up. So average weight before filming was 328 pounds. 
average weight after 30 weeks, 199, amazing. Average weight after six years of the final episode, 290 pounds. On average, participants gained most of the weight back. This shows us that being extreme is not sustainable. I mean, we should already know this. Stuff that's extreme, uh, you can't do that on an everyday basis. Like it would be amazing to go for Cancun, go to Cancun for a week and do nothing and just relax, eat everything and 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 swim and and sleep and worry about nothing. That's extreme relaxation. That would be amazing, but we can't do that. We cannot do that all year round. The same way you cannot do an extreme diet year round. It's not sustainable. So what we do differently is we believe you should not try to make an extreme change in an extremely short amount of time. If you want it to be sustainable, and that's kind of the point. Like, why would you do this? Why would you do this unless you want it to last? But guess what? Extreme changes in extremely short times, it's not sustainable. First, you need a sugar detox. Detoxes are a fitness trend in most cases, but it's actually necessary for sugar. Researchers have compared addiction to cocaine versus addiction to sugar using rats with electric shocks. And each rat would get shocked every time they went across the cage for either cocaine or sugar. Can you guess which one had the strongest addiction? The rat addicted to cocaine eventually got tired of being shocked. They gave up the cocaine. They checked into rehab, got themselves sober, and lived happily ever after in Los Angeles with his wife and three kids. The rat addicted to sugar wasn't as lucky. He shocked himself to death while trying to get his sugar under control, and his family never heard from him ever again. R.I.P. So I couldn't find that exact research paper. I'm 93% confident that it exists somewhere online, but I found another one that also confirms rats prefer sugar over cocaine. Intense sweetness surpasses cocaine reward. So why am I telling you this? It's because getting rid of sugar is super, super hard. You have to do a sugar detox, and this could take about 7 to 14 days, but most people don't know this. So after about eight day eight, they feel horrible and they just binge eat and go back to what they were doing. They don't know that there's, there's a seven to 14 day detox period. After a detox, we take the foods that you already enjoy and prefer and help you figure out ways to still eat it, but in healthier ways. For example, switching from vegetable oil to olive oil. I hope you're already doing this. Switching bread buns for lettuce wraps. You can cut 30 to 70% of your calories and still eat foods you like just by finding the right alternatives. By modifying how you eat instead of changing it completely, how much more likely do you think it is that you actually stay consistent? Very, very high. So too much or too little cardio, this is another big mistake. Uh, for example, you have the gym bros that they do weight training, but no cardio. And then you have the runner bros who do long runs and barely ever lift. Let's start with weight training and no cardio. If you train with very short periods in the gym, sorry, with very short rest periods, very short rest periods in the gym, you can elevate your heart rate enough to stimulate the positive effects of HIIT training, such as increased protein synthesis, increased testosterone, faster metabolism, and more. However, most guys in the gym rest way too long. Now, let's address the problem with long runs. They don't stimulate muscle and they beat up your joints. Low intensity running does not challenge your muscle in the same way that sprinting does. Do 10 seconds of sprinting and then 10 seconds of jogging and tell me how much more exhausted your body is after sprinting when every single muscle is stimulated in a sprint. Surprise, surprise, it's very, very high. Usually runners, they go do miles, they go do kilometers on the road or on a treadmill. The surface you run on can make a huge impact on your body. This is why at the Olympics, you don't see sprinters running on cement. I don't know why people haven't figured this out yet. 
if you run on the street, on cement, on pavement, on the hard, hard ground, it's going to chew up your joints. Long runs, intense runs on a hard surface, in many cases, leads to knee pain, foot pain, and even back pain. I've seen it so many times, and it's so discouraging. If you want to get in shape, you start running, and then you actually end up feeling worse from it. So here's what we do differently. We build your body to be able to sprint. I heard a, st a statistic that after 30 years old, 90% of men will never sprint again. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate, but it does seem accurate. Adults above 30 usually get scared of sprinting. Why? They are afraid they will get injured. Why? Because they know they are not in their best shape. Kids are not afraid to run. They don't even warm up, and it's because they know that they are in great shape so their body can handle it. Injury doesn't even cross their mind. Being able to sprint is a very, very, very good measurement of how healthy and athletic your body truly is. I've never seen someone that's unathletic that can sprint, and I've never seen someone that can sprint who is unathletic. It just hasn't happened yet. I'm sure it'll happen, but it hasn't happened yet. It requires everything to be strong, and it will reveal weak points very quickly. This is not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. If your hamstring bothers you, then you need to strengthen it. If your knees hurt, you probably need to strengthen the feet. It's better that you find out where you are weak now so you can fix it rather than hide from sprinting and then find out 20, 30 years later that all these areas are, are weak and you start getting pain out of nowhere. It will be much harder to fix it later. Depending on the person, we will begin the individual by either sprinting on grass or the elliptical bike. The main mechanism that we're trying to use is science-based HIIT training, high-intensity interval training. There's a lot of research on how many benefits it has. The problem is that older adults start to eliminate it from their life. You really only need three to five high intensity intervals to really stimulate your heart, cardiovascular system, and get the benefits from HIIT. For a person that doesn't have at least six months of consistent training, we will start them on the bike. You'll get the HIIT benefits without the negatives of running on a treadmill where you can easily hurt your joints if you're out of shape. Two to three times per week with some bodyweight exercises, it could be as simple as 15 minutes HIIT work, 15, 25 minutes strength training. Then we progress to sprinting on the grass once the body is ready. We stay off the track. Even Usain Bolt spent most of his workouts on the grass because it is less stressful on the body. Go to his YouTube channel. Go in there and see what he says about training on the grass versus training on the track. They train most of the time on grass. And if the person who is the fastest man in the world, freak genetics, freak athleticism, did not spend most of the time even training on the track, which is already a pretty good surface, then why does everyone else have not, why, why hasn't everyone else figured out that if you want to run and train, you should be on the grass? Because that's where you're going to, where you're going to protect your body, still get the benefits without chewing up your joints. I don't know why, but people just haven't figured it out yet. Lack of reinforcing environment. Here's another problem. Your peer group sets a standard for what is acceptable and what is normal. If everyone around you is a hard worker, you will probably be a hard worker. If everyone around you cares about family, you will probably care about family. If everyone around you cares about partying, you will probably be a party animal. The problem is that majority of people around you don't care about fitness as much as you would like to care about it. It makes sense. You are no longer a kid and you have your responsibilities. Unless you're a, a fitness person who hangs out only with fitness people, you're probably not going to have this peer group that you need to lose weight, transform your body. But the peer group sets a standard, and if that standard is low for health, then you will fall to that standard. Usually humans, they fall to the lowest standard. So if the standard for health is very, very low, that's what we're going to fall to. 
if you're hanging out with everyone that's super uh, athletic and in super good shape, even if you become the least athletic person in that group, you're still going to be way above everybody else. So here's what we do differently. We use positive peer pressure, PPP. In school, the most effective way to get somebody to do something they don't want to do is to get a large group of cool kids to tell them to do something. Usually, it's a bad thing. We use it for good things. The power of peer pressure to keep an individual accountable is extremely, extremely effective. We put men over 30 who want to get in better shape for their kids in a group where everyone knows each other, they know each other's goals, and they understand the goal enough to keep each other accountable. Because everyone is similar, everyone respects each other, everyone is afraid to let the group down, because if nobody knows your goals, nobody cares. If nobody understands your goals, nobody cares. If nobody benefits from your goals, nobody cares. To do this successfully, our program is not cheap, so everyone takes it seriously. When the program is expensive, nobody wants to waste their time. Nobody wants to waste their money, so everyone stays on track. It's actually, it's actually very simple. And anyone can do this without having a coaching program if they just find two to three friends who are willing to put a lot of money into an account. Into a, let's say you put them, you put your money into a bank account and you have a fourth person manage the account. If someone in the group screws up and doesn't follow the nutrition program or the workout program, that person loses the money and it gets shared between everybody else. If you want to do this successfully on your own, just get a group of people and just do this. So Jeff, 61, Vincent, 38, Marco, 44, Robert, 37, Christina, 34, uh, uh, Windows, 60 years, 60 years old. So you get the idea. It's very, if these individuals can reach a high level of athletic performance after 30, I think you watching this video can lose 30 to 60 pounds and get in good enough shape to keep up with their kids. It's not that difficult. So anyone who is free from injury and free from serious medical problems can do this. It's really not rocket science. And I've given you all the steps you need to do it on your own if you'd like to. Now, here's my offer. Helping a 30-year-old win a gold medal in a race is way, way more difficult than helping a 38-year-old lose 30 to 60 pounds and keep up with their kids. That's easy for us. If you want my team and I to help you implement all these steps into your life, you can apply for coaching using the link next to this video. During this call, you will be able to speak with me directly where I will figure out if this program is correct for you. And if it is, then I'll invite you to join us. If it's not, then I'll just give you some more free information. This is not cheap. This is for serious people only. So that's my only warning. Uh, if you want to book a call, just know that ahead of time. So if you are ready to apply and you want to speak to us, click the link and I'll talk to you soon.